Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here's the Google Apps Updates Roundup number 7. In this video I will show you all the changes I spotted in Google Apps in the month of September. So let's check what's new with Google Apps but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Now let's start with the Gboard. Now when you go to settings and then theme, under the default section you will see here three new themes to choose from. And the first one is called System Auto. When you choose System Auto, the device will automatically change your Gboard theme based on your device settings and it will show you the dark and light theme side by side to give you an idea how your keyboard will look like. And when you hit apply and then change your device settings to dark, or you can always set it to stay in light or dark theme by default. So if you, if you choose, for example, default light, it will always stay in light theme. And when you change it to dark, it will do the same thing as well. The next change is related to the emoji suggestions in your suggestions strip. So for example, when you write a word that has a relevant emoji available, you will see here the Gboard is now showing you two different emojis to choose from instead of just one. And finally, the full integration of the Bitmoji app in your Gboard. Now when you go to the stickers, you will see a dedicated tab at the bottom that will show you your Bitmoji stickers. If you are not familiar with Bitmoji, this app will allow you to create your own avatar and then it will generate stickers for you that you can use later in your chats. Next, Google Photos. Now you get a completely redesigned photo editor. So let's take this photo as an example and then I'm gonna tap on the edit button. Here you will see at the bottom you have a carousel where you can choose different categories and at the top you have the actions you can do. The first category is called suggestions where you can tap on enhance to automatically enhance your photo or choose warm or cool. To remove the action, you can simply tap on the button one more time. Under crop, you have other options like, for example, uh, change the aspect ratio of your image. You can choose between original, square, 16 by 9, 4 by 3 or 3 by 2. Let's choose 16 by 9. Here you can do a quick 90 degrees rotation or use the slider for custom degrees. Uh, also here you have the crop where you can uh, crop the image uh, the way you want. But the new thing here you can, you will get this magnifying glass to show you exactly where are you cropping. As you see here, it's showing at the top left corner, which is pretty handy, especially if you are going to crop uh, images uh, for documents and stuff like that it will work the best for you uh, next you have something called adjust under adjust you have plenty of new options you have the brightness the contrast white point highlights shadows black point you have saturation warmth tint skin tone blue tone pop and vignette you also have the filter step which includes the same filters you we used to have in the older version and under more you have the Snapseed and the markup uh, application where you can add free hand drawings or text if you want to, right? Uh, also when it comes to portraits you will get even more options. So here is a selfie and when I tap on the edit button you will see I have black and white portrait or I have the color pop. You can also go to the adjust section and here you will see two new options one is called the blur where you can adjust your blur effect even if your photo is not a portrait photo still you can do that uh, you can also go to color focus and here you can uh, adjust the saturation of color of your background only so you can keep the subject in the same colors but here you can change the focus and instead of using the color pop which completely makes your background black and white using color focus will allow you to uh, decrease the saturation of the background and not to make it completely black and white you can make it let's say 70% 60% whatever you want uh, in some cases also when you take portraits using the back camera you will get also another option called um, depth so let's tap on edit here and then go to adjust you will see here a new 
edit tool called depth. I'm not sure what it does exactly because I tried to play around with it and I didn't see uh, uh, much of a difference here when it comes to depth. So all I can do here, I can make the focus on the background or on the foreground. But changing the slider doesn't impact the uh, blur effect, so I'm not sure what it does exactly. Keep in mind that the video editor is exactly the same in this new version. You will not get any new options. You still have the same exact options as before where you can trim your video, stabilize it, rotate it, export a frame, or mute it. Now let's talk about Google's RCS messaging. The feature is started to roll out to more countries. I managed to get the feature active on all of my devices. So I have here my Pixel 4a and the Pixel 4 XL and let me show you the new features. One of the most recent features added to the RCS messaging is the ability to put reactions on the text or the media in your chat. So for example, when I tap and hold on this photo, I can put a specific reaction and it will reflect on my other phone in few seconds. I can also do the same thing from the other phone and you will see the two reactions are now appearing on the same exact photo. You can also change your reactions or remove it altogether. So for example, when you tap and hold on the image, it will put a gray circle on the reaction used. You can either change it or you can tap on it again to remove it and it will be taken off completely from the reactions. And the second feature you have is the suggestions. As you see here, I have suggestions automatically created for me based on the reply I received. So I can tap on any of the suggestions and I will receive it on the other phone. You will also get suggestions for GIFs. As you see here on my Pixel 4a, it says thumbs up GIFs. When I tap on this, it will show me a list of thumbs up GIFs that can, I can choose from and then I can send it that way. You will also get a basic photo editor. So for example, when you tap on this image, you will have an edit button at the top right corner. When you tap on it, you will have two options to choose from, either freehand drawing or adding text to your image and then attach. It will send it back in your chat. You will also get two quick buttons at the top right corner, one for video calling and in this case it will launch the Google Duo app or you can simply tap on the phone calling button and that will launch the phone app to do a normal voice call. Next, Google Chrome. And if you are using version 85 or more, you can activate a new share sheet that will give you some helpful features. So let me show you how it looks and then I will tell you how to activate it. So now I'm gonna tap on share to share the link of this web page. And as you see here, the new share sheet is a lot more compact and it has some new options as well. The first option here is called the copy link, which is pretty straightforward. The second one is called send to your device. And when you tap on it, it will show you the other devices that are signed in with the same Google account. So you can push this link to those devices directly uh, by tapping on it. And this link will open on my desktop machine or any other device signed in with the same Google account. Uh, also, the third option you have is called the QR code. And when you tap on QR code, it will show you the link as a QR code that you can download as an image if you want to, or you can also go to the scan tab to scan the QR code from another device. The fourth option here is called print. And when you tap on print, if you have any wireless printer, so you can print this page straight away. And finally, if you want to access the normal share sheet of Android, you can scroll to the far right and then tap on more. And when you tap on more, you will see the normal share sheet of any Android device showing up back again. To activate this new share sheet, all you need to do is to access the Chrome flags page by typing the word Chrome and then colon, two forward slashes and the word flags. Then hit enter and you will see all the flags. You can search through them. The first thing we need to look for is called sharing hub. And you will see here Chrome Sharing Hub. You just need to set it to enabled. And then you need to search for QR codes. And another option here called Chrome Share QR Codes. You also need to set it to enabled. Then restart your Google Chrome 
and the new sharing sheet will be available for you. Next, Google Assistant. And the first change I will show you here is the ability to add a shortcut for the Google Assistant snapshot feature to your home screen. Once you open the snapshot page, you will see a quick suggestion telling you that now you can add a shortcut on your home screen. Once you tap on add shortcut, you will get the icon available for you. You can drag it anywhere you want or tap on add automatically, or I can simply use my voice by saying, show me my day and Google Assistant will open the same snapshot page for me. Not only this, but you can also choose the type of information you want to see on your snapshot page by tapping on the gear icon at the top. And here you will have a very long list of stuff to choose from. So you can turn it on or off. Here you have upcoming tasks, you have recommendations, you have travel, you have celebrations and interests. Next, I will show you the most exciting new feature in Google Assistant, which is called shortcuts. This feature will allow you to do certain actions in your third party apps using your Google Assistant by assigning a certain command for each shortcut, which is very similar to Siri shortcuts. To access the new feature, just go to your Google Assistant settings and scroll down until you see a new menu item called shortcuts. And when you go inside, the first thing you will see some, some suggested shortcuts it will show you one shortcut per app. But if you want to access the full list of shortcuts per app, just to scroll down and you will see the list of apps you have installed. And when you go inside an app, you will see the list of available shortcuts that you can choose from. So I will pick Facebook as an example. And as you see here, I have a lot of stuff to choose from. Let's say I want to create a new post using my Google Assistant on Facebook. So I'm gonna tap on the plus sign next to the shortcut and then it will show me the command that I should use in the future to uh, activate the shortcut. You can also edit the phrase if you want to. You don't have to stick to the new Facebook post phrase. You can simply tap on the edit icon and then change the phrase if you want to. But I'm gonna remove the word Facebook from the phrase and just call it new post. So let's give that a try. New post. You can also access your shortcuts using the Google Assistant by saying my shortcuts. Here's assistant settings. As you see now I got immediate access to my shortcuts. Here I can go to the your shortcuts tab. Here you can edit or delete the shortcuts you want by tapping on the shortcut and here you have delete or edit buttons or you can quickly edit by tapping on the edit icon. Next, there is a new routine called Workday that can help you manage your workday, especially if you are working from home, that you can find under your Google Assistant settings and then routines. When you go inside, you will see a new menu item called Workday. Here you can set a lot of actions and uh, reminders that can help you manage your workday better. The first thing you get is the toggle to turn it on or off. Next, you can choose your workday's schedule. You also can choose your assistant responses to play on your phone only by ticking this box or you can choose any of the smart speakers you have in your home. In this case, I'm using the Google Home Mini, which is called speaker. After that, you can set or add timings and based on that timings, you can assign certain actions. For example, here you have uh, some actions that will take place at 7.30 a.m., 12 p.m. and so on. You can also add more times by scrolling all the way down and you will have a button called add new time. When you add a new time, you can choose from the uh, predefined timings or you can add your time manually. So let's take a look at the actions that you can do with your Google Assistant. For example, at 7.30, it says here, tell me the time and say it's time to stand up and stretch. You can either edit the uh, default actions already added for you or you can add your own action by typing a specific command yourself that the Google Assistant will do for you or you can browse the popular actions. Under popular actions you have a lot of stuff to choose from. For example if you have smart lights you can set them to turn on or off. Uh, if you have thermostat you can also do the same thing. Uh, you can also adjust scenes like filming that will adjust your lights uh, to, ma to be suitable for filming. Uh, you can lock the doors, arm your security system if you have any smart uh, devices uh, from this category. Uh, also, you can 
ask your assistant to tell you about the weather, to tell you about the commute to work, the commute to home, uh, today's calendar, and so on. You have a very long list of stuff to choose from. One more change under Google Assistant. When you go to your Google Assistant settings and then scroll down, you will see now you have something called food preferences. Previously, it was called food and drink. When you go inside food preferences for the first time, you will get this page, which will ask you to choose your dietary preferences, uh, the cuisines that you love, and also the ingredients that you want to have in your food. And that will help you get better suggestions uh, when it comes to food recipes, either on your uh, smart screens or also in your snapshot uh, of the Google Assistant on your phone. And finally, if you are using the Google app on your iOS device, now you can ask it to read any article you have open in the Google app by tapping on this icon at the top right corner. So let me play the GIF to show you how it works. So here you go, you can now read articles on your iOS device using the Google app. Next, Google Lens, and it got a new design. If you take a look here at the bottom, you will see the name of the tab that you are currently on. You have Translate, you have Text, Search, Homework that can help you to solve math problems. Uh, you have Shopping, Places, and Dining. Next, YouTube Music. And the first to change the filters you get at the top of your home screen. Here you have the Workout, Focus, Relax, and commute you can also remove the filter if you want by tapping on it one more time and then it will show you all the normal suggestions created for you the next change is under the explore tab when you go to explore now you have a new section called charts when you go to charts here you can see the top charts in 57 different countries that you can change from this drop down menu by tapping here you will see the full list of countries to choose from let's say we're going to pick united states and now you can see the top charts of the united states and this feature is rolling out to more countries as the time goes by but keep in mind that the new filters at the top of your youtube music home screen are not available on each and every device here i'm using two different accounts and as you see I have it only on my Pixel 4a, while on my Pixel 4 XL with the YouTube premium subscription doesn't show me the filters. I only have the favorites carousel at the top. Next, if you are not subscribed to the YouTube premium service and only using the free version of YouTube music, now you can cast your uploaded songs from your phone to any smart speaker which wasn't available before. But the ability to upload your own songs to the YouTube music server is not currently available everywhere. For example, I don't have it here in the UAE. Now YouTube Music will give you the ability to use your Google Assistant to play your own playlists. So let me show you how it works. Play my rap playlist. Okay, your YouTube Music playlist called rap. Here you go. So this playlist I created myself and now I can ask my Google Assistant to play it for me, which wasn't the case before. Next, the Google Home app. Now you can add smart locks from Yell and August locks to your Google Home app so you can easily control them from here or you can simply use the new Android 11 power menu. One more change here if you are trying to set up a new device in your Google Home app by tapping on the add button and then tap on setup device then it choose setup new device choose your home now your google home app will start looking for the nearby devices once it fails to locate any nearby device it will give you a new list of choices here it will ask you are you trying to set up a chromecast a camera a display and so on and so forth which wasn't available before and finally when you go to settings now you will have a section for notifications and when you go inside, you will have two menu items. One is called general notifications and the other one is Nest Wi-Fi. When you go to general notifications, you can turn on or off a lot of stuff here like people and devices. And you will get also a description to explain to you how this works. Uh, also under Nest Wi-Fi, you will have here a notification or you can get a notification every time a new device gets added to your Nest Wi-Fi at home. There is also a new feature that is currently rolling out called Presence Sensing. This feature will allow you to do certain actions on your smart devices every time you leave your home or arrive. 
but the feature is not currently available on any of my devices so expect to see it in my next video next the google files app now you will get a new pin encrypted folder where you can store your sensitive data and no one can access this folder without using the four digits pin that you will set for the first time let's see how it works as you see here i have under collections a folder with a lock on it and when i tap on it it will ask me to set up a pin so i will choose one two three four next and then confirm the pin next and now i have the uh, encrypted folder now you can put the files to this folder and then you can access it later using only your pin and if you want to move any file to this new pin encrypted folder all you need to do is to locate the file and then tap the three dots next to it you will have a new option here called move to save folder tap on it it will ask you for the pin hit next and you can access it later if you want to by using your pin if you want to move it out of the save folder you can tap the three dots again and you will have also another option called move out of save folder and it will move back to its original uh, place as you see here i have it back again in my downloads folder next google duo now support screen sharing so i have here a call running between my pixel 4 xl and the pixel 4a and when you tap on the three dots over here you will see a new option called screen share when you tap on it it will give you a quick disclaimer that your phone screen will be recorded once you tap on start now you can see the phone screen on the pixel 4 xl over here while i have my camera active on the pixel 4 xl next google maps and the first change is the new pill shaped search bar at the top you will also have google colors around your profile picture next there are a lot of improvements related to the live view feature that i will not be able to show you in this video however i will leave a link in the description below if you want to know more about these new changes next google podcasts now show you the cast button in the now playing screen so once you tap on the title at the bottom you will see the new cast icon is now replacing the information icon that we used to have before when you tap on it you will be able to choose from the list of devices that you can cast to from your phone next android auto and you can now connect your phone to your car wirelessly if you are using one of the supported phones and supported car models if you want to know more check the link in the description below next the google one app on ios devices can now back up your iphone for free without the need to subscribe to the google one service but keep in mind you will only get the 15 gigabytes free storage that you get with any gmail account next google meet will not limit calls to 60 minutes for free gmail users until next year next google drive will auto delete trash files after 30 days next if you are using a google pixel 4a and you have the pixel live wallpapers app updated to version 1.4 from the play store you will get a new wallpaper under the styles and wallpapers then come alive and you will see a new wallpaper here called pinball this wallpaper for the first time will give you a download button once you hit the download you will be able to customize it by choosing from four different colors as you see here and once you are happy with the color you can tap on set wallpaper and as you see it actually utilizes the whole bunch display and you have a ring around your camera you can interact with the wallpaper by tapping on it and you will start seeing some balls moving on the screen also by swiping between your home screens the balls will keep moving and that's pretty much it so that's pretty much it for today those are all the changes in google apps i managed to get my hands on in september please let me know in the comments if i missed any of the new changes so I hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.